Hello there. If you are listening to this, you have received the recording from your teacher and you have agreed to the fact that if you are listening to this recording on the quiz, you are not able to get a completely full score of a three. That is because you are receiving help and it is a reading test. So therefore you are probably going to be a two. I just want to remind you that that is what is going on if you are listening to this recording and you are agreeing to that, okay? So I'm gonna read you the directions. I'm also gonna read you the text itself. And I would highly recommend that you listen twice. That is how you are going to be most successful. You have plenty of time to do this. So if you listen twice, you are more likely to be successful. So here are the directions before reading. It says to read the text once for flow slash understanding, and then read a second time for purpose. In your case, you would listen once for flow and understanding, just gather the information. And then the second time reading for purpose, which is to answer the questions. This is just asking, saying you can ask for a video to help you, which this is that video. After you read the text, you're going to want to read each question very carefully. Remember, you want to cross out the distractors and look back to the text to find your evidence. Choose the best answer. Please note, some questions are short response where you will have to write a three sentence response. Others are multiple choice. Now on here, I don't think it lets you actually cross the distractors out, but I would recommend you just write the wrong ones down somewhere. You write A, B, C, D on your paper, and cross out the ones you know are wrong for that question, right? Still do that. So we're gonna read the text. This is my first read. Like I said, when I'm done, I'd recommend going back and listening again. The text is called, Who Wants a Spiny Snack? Not me. Okay. Not many animals. How the spiny puffer stays safe in the ocean. So it's saying not many animals want a spiny snack, which makes sense to me. A shark glides through the warm water, searching for its next meal. It spots an ordinary brown fish swimming slowly in the clear waters ahead. But as the shark approaches, puff, 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 the fish puffs out into a round spiny ball. The startled shark swims away. The puffer fish is safer now at least until the next shark or big fish swims by. That seems pretty smart. Here he is normal, here he is puffed. The ocean can be a dangerous place for a small fish like the puffer. Its waters are full of predators like sharks, squid, and bigger fish that eat small fish. But puffer fish have adaptations that protect them from predators. I hope you recognize that word. All animals have adaptations to stay alive. An adaptation is a body part or behavior that helps an animal live in its environment. Predators have adaptations that help them hunt. A shark's powerful torpedo-shaped tail fin and sharp teeth are two adaptations. They're saying those are ones that help him hunt. Other animals have adaptations that provide protection from predators. These animals may be fast enough to escape predators, or they might use camouflage, special patterns, or colors that help them hide in their environment. So they're comparing two different types of adaptations based on if it's a predator or prey, right? <clears throat> oh, look at that picture. Can you find the flounder? Flounder is a type of fish. Wow, look at that. But some animals don't run or hide. They have bodies that are hard to eat. Just picture the sharp spines of a porcupine, hedgehog, or sea urchin. Few predators are large or tough enough to make a meal out of those animals or of those animals. So here's an example of the porcupine. Porcupines have long, sharp spines that protect them, as seen in the picture. Some toads and snakes have their own way to discourage predators. They puff themselves up to look larger. The bigger an animal, the harder it is to catch and eat. 
Pufferfish combine both of these adaptations. They puff up and have large, sharp spines. So here's a picture of a close-up. A puffer fish's skin is hard and covered with sharp spines. Swimming along, a puffer fish looks like any other fish, but when it is threatened, it swells up suddenly like a big balloon. When this happens, it's easy to see why some people call it a balloon fish, but this fish is no soft, squishy balloon. Its skin becomes rigid with sharp spines sticking out in all directions. Usually, these spines lie flat against the side of the fish. When the fish puffs up, the outer skin stretches out and pulls the spines up. How does the puffer fish make this amazing transformation, it asks. So here it talks a little bit about, about that question. Despite its nickname, it doesn't blow itself up like a balloon. Instead, it fills up with water. The fish pumps a huge amount of water through its mouth into its stomach. See here? So mouth to stomach. Um, filled with water, its stomach becomes almost 100 times larger. The stomach can expand like this because it's usually crumpled into tiny folds. As water rushes in, the stomach unfolds. To make room for the swelling stomach, the other, or other organs like the liver and intestines are pushed to the side. Pretty remarkable, right? So there's its spine, its spine like curves up as the stomach expands, the other organs sort of move, okay? A spiny puffer can change from an ordinary looking fish into a menacing spiny ball in a few seconds. Then only the biggest animals dare to eat it. The ocean may be full of dangers, but adaptations like sharp spines and puffing up help keep the puffer safe. Oh, thank goodness. What a cute little puffer. I love those things. So, if you just listened to me read it and you've only listened once, well, you have not completed your directions. You must listen again. Why? Because there was a ton of information in that article, a lot, and you're going to want to hear it again just to make sure that you are fully knowledgeable when it's time to listen to the questions. So, I believe there's a way for Canvas to read these to you. However, I know that sometimes those automatic readers are a little harder to understand than a real person's voice. So I'm also going to read you the questions. If you are listening, it is your job to make sure you've heard the article twice. Question one, at the beginning of the text, what does the fish do when the shark approaches? Does it puff out into a round spiny ball? Swim, it swims away startled. It swims slowly, searching for a meal. It attacks the shark with its spines. So go back to the beginning of the text. What does the fish do when the shark approaches? Read it one more time. It puffs out into a round spiny ball. It swims away startled. It swims slowly, searching for a meal, or it attacks the shark with its spines. Please pick the best answer. I'm going to go to question two. Read these sentences. Oops, it's going to pop my article back up. Here we go. Read these sentences from the text in the box below. So this is a basically a little excerpt from the text, a little section, if you will. Some toads and snakes have their own way to discourage predators. They puff themselves up to look larger. The bigger an animal, the harder it is to catch and eat. Pufferfish combine both of these adaptations. They puff up and they have long, sharp spines. Based on this evidence, talking about the evidence right here in the box, why might a pufferfish puff itself up? Do they puff themselves up to make the pufferfish appear difficult to catch and eat? To prepare itself to fight off a predator's attack. Two, be able to hunt, catch, and eat other fish more easily. So they're asking, why does the puffer fish puff up, right? Keep that in mind. Or to try and convince a predator that the puffer fish is a toad or snake. So once again, there's this piece here. 
I'm going to read it one more time for you, okay? So, so read these sentences from the box below. This comes directly from the article. Some toads and snakes have their own way to discourage predators. They puff themselves up to look larger. The bigger an animal, the harder it is to catch and eat. Puffer fish combine both of these adaptations, the ones they just mentioned. They puff up and they have long, sharp spines. Based on this evidence here in the box, why might a puffer fish puff itself up? Is it to make the puffer fish appear difficult to catch and eat? Is it to prepare itself to fight off a predator's attack? Is it to be able to catch and eat other fish more easily? Or is it to try to convince a predator that the puffer fish is a toad or snake? You can listen to me say that as many times as you want if you go back. Pick the best answer based on the evidence. We're going to move on now to question three. Okay, this one. Ooh, 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 fun times. Short response question. There are no answers here for you. So it does give you what your criteria are, though, as did it at the beginning of our test. I don't remember if it shows it up here again. Oh, it sure does. Look, please note some, some questions are short response where you will have to type a three-sentence response. Others are multiple choice. Well, I don't see multiple choice here, so what must that mean? What is the main idea of this text? Use two pieces of evidence to support your answer. Please remember to use your transition words. I'll read this one again. Don't forget your criteria. It states it here and up top. What is the main idea of this text? Looking at the whole story. Use two pieces of evidence to support your answer. Please remember to use your transition words. There aren't any on here for you because we have been learning about those for a while and you learned them in third grade too, okay? So you're writing sentences here, okay? When you're done, check and make sure you have everything you need for that, okay? By this point, you're in fourth grade, hopefully you know what a sentence is and you know what a transition is, you know what evidence is, you know what main idea is. So take it slow, this is not a race. It is a quiz, not a race, the opposite of a race, in my opinion. You want to go slow and steady for this. When you've finished writing your multi-sentence response, we are moving on to question four. Look at you. Lucky you, you got another multiple choice. Which one of these does the author describe in detail in the text? Describe in detail is in italics. That might mean they want us to really pay attention to what those words are. I'm going to read the question part again, and then I'm going to read you your responses. Which one of these does the author describe in detail in the text? Does the author describe how a puffer fish puffs up into a round spiny ball? Why different kinds of sharks have different adaptations? the different predators that are likely to hunt porcupines or what happens when a predator eats a, a spiny puffer fish. So they're saying, what does the author describe in detail, right? So describing, think about what does that mean, okay? Which one of these? Maybe it mentions more than one, but which one does he describe in detail? Okay, I'll read these options again because I did read this. How? A puffer fish puffs up into a round spiny ball. Why different kinds of sharks have different adaptations? The different predators that are likely to hunt porcupines or what happens when a predator eats a spiny puffer fish? Moving on to question five. Remember, like this is the same on every page. Just heads up. It just follows you. Question five. Oh, how fun. It is a, looks like a vocab question. Okay, read the following sentences and use context clues to help you find the word. Okay, but this fish is no soft, squishy balloon. Its skin 
becomes rigid with sharp spines sticking out in all directions. Notice the word rigid here is bold and underlined. The word rigid in this situation means hard, soft, stinky, or colored. I'll read the little uh, quote again. Read the following sentences and use context clues to help you find the word. But this fish is no soft, squishy balloon. Its skin becomes rigid with sharp spines sticking out in all directions. I don't know why I read it like that. It sounded fun. Does the word rigid in this situation mean hard, soft, stinky, or colored? Pick the one that makes the most sense. Moving on to question six. Pick the correct choice to fill in the blank. Which word best fits this sentence and makes the most sense? Okay. Best fits and makes the most sense. Predators have adaptations that help them hunt. Blank, a shark's Powerful torpedo-shaped tail fin and sharp teeth are two adaptations. So you have to pick one of these that fills in the blank, it fits best, and it makes the most sense. Okay. Pick the correct choice to fill in the blank. Which word best fits the sentence and makes the most sense? Predators have adaptations that help them hunt. A shark or excuse me, blank, a shark's powerful torpedo-shaped tail fin and sharp teeth are two adaptations. So you got to plop these in and see which one works. The options are, for example, however, as a result, and at first. Think about what these words signal and which one makes the most sense. When you're finished, we are moving on to question seven. I believe that might be the last one. Let's find out. I wrote this, but it's been a minute. <laughs> I think, is it the end? Is it the end? Yes, it is. Because look, omit quiz. Woohoo. Okay. But some animals don't run or hide. They have bodies that are something. Using the text, choose the answer that fills in the sentence above with the correct words. Hmm. Oh, here are my options. Do they have bodies that are hard to eat, are fluffy, are camouflage, or are feathered? Well, animals all, probably some animals fit in all of these categories, but based on this and based on the text, which one fits? Not based on your brain, not based on something else you read, based on the text. Okay. But some animals don't run or hide, they have bodies that are. Do they have bodies that are hard to eat, fluffy, camouflage, or feathered? Okay, so use the text to look back for that. When you're done, you know, if I were you, I'd go back, I'd check every single one. Because that is what a good test taker and student does. They are careful. They check their work. They read it multiple times. I used to, when I was taking tests, read things at least five times because I was very intense about it. I'm sure that's not surprising if you know me. But... That is how you're going to do well, okay? Good test taking is a skill in and of itself. You can be super smart and not be a good test taker if you're not careful. So check your work, okay? You got this. When you're done, when you're certain that you've done the best answers you can do, at that point is when you should submit your quiz, okay? And I think it'll probably say something like, submitted. And you should be able to see all the right answers as you go to, I think. Actually, yeah, if it does that, you might not be able to go back and check. I don't recall if it gives you the answer after you do it. All right, good luck. You can listen to me do this as many times as you want. Lucky you.